Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this session, I say session because I'm streaming on Twitch as well as eventually producing this video for YouTube, uh, I am going to try to rescue some Kerbals. So we have a new system, the Lynx spacecraft on the Carpenter rocket. The Lynx is the bigger Lynx and hopefully we can get some Kerbals inside and then we can deploy them to other things. So, rescue and recovery. Now, my goal for this series is largely to test various contracts, and I'm hoping to create more interesting contracts like these ore contracts uh, if they work. But I'm not very good at configuring contracts in contract configurators, so uh, who knows whether these things will actually work, like making a base, or ultimately I would like to, uh, you know, have targeted locations for various events and I'll produce mods which will, you know, in KSP2 they had those little monuments and things to discover. I can make those, I can make the models, what I, I'm not too sure about is making the contract to get you to those locations. That's, that's the trick. But uh, as a result, I'm also testing more uh, contracts that maybe uh, not everybody will want to do, like the rescue contracts. I, I want to see what orbits they end up in. And so I understand not everybody is going to be thrilled with doing the rescue contracts, but I'll test them out. And actually, I like them anyway. Now, unfortunately, quite a lot of these rescue contracts seem to be around the moon <laughs> instead of Earth. I thought we would at least get three Earth ones, uh, but there seems to be only one Earth one, which isn't actually worth it in terms of money. So that's a little bit of a pickle. And... So we, we've got a whole bunch around the moon. And maybe I could wait a while for for that, but maybe I should build a moon version. But the moon version is fraught and expensive. But then again, they do pay fairly well when it's around the moon. The Earth ones don't pay very well, but the moon ones do. I think we could... Maybe, maybe I should pick them up now. I don't know how fair it is. Thankfully, it's not giving me any from Mars because we haven't done a, a Mars flyby with a Kerbal. I mean, we've done Mars flyby with a Probe, but no Mars flyby with a Kerbal. So at least it's smart enough not to give me one from uh, to Mars. That's nice. That's a whole lot of people we stranded around the moon, though. Um, yeah. The Another good thing is I don't think that they lose supplies until we get within render range. That's important. Uh, so all in all, we should pick up the ones that actually pay better. <laughs> you know, if, if you guys want your Kerbal rescued, the surface of the moon is out. Uh, but we want orbit of the moon paying well. The failure cost is not too bad, actually. I Now, I didn't configure these. This is the stock rescue contracts. I didn't configure new rescue contracts. So, well, uh, apparently uh, if you can't rescue the Kerbals, well, it's not, it's not our fault. We didn't leave them there. So, okay, maybe maybe that's fair. So, I'm going to try, let's say Jedman. That seems like a good price. Um, Kafsky. Kafsky. These are not paying well enough. Mm -hmm. And maybe Tamin. Maybe we should rescue Tamara first. And then send Tamara over to rescue the others from the moon. Uh, anyway, uh, I feel guilty about not getting Tamara. Since she's around the moon. Uh, around the earth. Um, let's see where they are. Let's see where they are. Okay, so 174 by 137. One end is slightly in the atmosphere. I was afraid of that. I don't know why it does that. Because it should know where the atmosphere is. This is pretty high moon orbit. This one's a really high moon orbit. And that's also a high moon orbit. Well, see, if you go to an orbit like that, of course you're going to get stranded. I have no idea why they were there. Now, let's, uh, we've got all these moon ones. We need to take a closer look at the, the buzz light. Maybe I should just send the buzz. Or maybe, I mean, I, I think with all the money that we're getting from it, we could, let's see, how much does the buzz cost without a lander? 400,000. What if we only had two boosters? 
I mean, that's 328, but, well, yeah, it doesn't get off the ground. <laughs> this, this is floaty. But we could just light the core engines right away. Then it'll be all right. So, I mean, we should have enough to get to the moon, and then we have 3,000 in the, in the service module up there in order to do all the maneuvers around the moon to grab the Kerbals. I guess we'll just make this the Bud Light then. I mean, Buzz Light. Buzz Medium? I mean, is there any reason for a Buzz Light if this can do this? I mean, this is hardly uh, savings. What's happened here is we've put eight engines, not the agent, eight engines, uh, seven engines, Hydrolox engines on the core. But it seems cheaper to just have the boosters, and we probably get more delta V out of it. It's heavier, but it's not that much more expensive because the Hydrolox engines are more expensive. I think this is technically the Buzz Light, and we'll probably never launch the other variation. Well, but we have to replace the pod. Oops. Mm, yeah, let me get the other pod. This is not the pod that people can come in with. No, now that is 355. What? Keeps changing things on me. This pod is that much more expensive to produce? Gosh. Well, anyway, they'll still be more expensive with the other rocket, the Buzz Light. Okay, building one. And we'll shove that ahead of the Carpenter. The Carpenter will be done anyway. But let's put some more points into construction. We can't have them take this long. Okay, upgrade points. You've only got a million? Those those rescue contracts don't pay much in terms of advance. Well, 12, fine. A whole year. Well, we'll have to do the Mars Lander and Jupiter Orbital ones first. Actually, let's let's get a few more points. Uh So Right. Where is that thing? Mars Lander. And we need to see about comms. Well, it's not showing that thing's comm line, but it's that ways. I guess this approach will be fine. Maybe I should just go on this side. Let's see. Maybe we can make it softer by capturing first. Let's see. Well, yeah, we can definitely capture first. We might as well then. Now, ideally, we'd like to uh, land in the Valles Marineris. That'd be best for the parachutes, but not too sure. Anyway, anywhere on this periapsis side will be good for comms. We do have a short enough burn time. And this, this is Mount Olympus or one of those mountains. Yeah, it is Mount Olympus. The Mars version. Not the Greek version. Okay, well, we don't need to bring it down too sharply. Having a nice little capture is good enough for now. And since I'm going straight down... I'll be decisive about this. It should be able to do it with 45, but maybe we'll go for 42. So, let me jettison that service module bit. We want these RCS thrusters. We're just trying to land this probe on Mars. That's it. We have a Mars re recover science from the surface of Mars contract. So, we have line back on this side. Got a nice little periapsis. I'm assuming that periapsis is gonna be okay. And uh, let's wait a little bit longer because of the internal battery charge. It does have solar panels, but okay. 
separation time. Woo. So yeah, for RP2000, I, I mean, I hope it's something that can sort of extend the life of KSP by making Realism Overhaul more accessible to people because it's a very simple career mode. And uh, hopefully I can give people a lot to do in it if I can figure out the contract configurator stuff a little bit better. But And then add some mod parts that will make it fancy. That's the idea. Okay, here we go. Um, we're slow enough. The parachutes, the, dr the drogue chute should come out soon. Okay, uh, we have deployment of the drogue chutes. It's fighting a little bit, but let me just turn those off. We have deployment of the drogue chutes. It's wiggling, but it's all right. All right, well, that should be a safe velocity for landing. We've got some science we can transmit now. And... Plop. Oh, plop. Okay. Science. Okay. Okay, and Arabia Terra is where we landed. And we fulfilled the science day from the surface of Mars contract. So that's good. That's all done. You can't do anything more with this. It's not recharging enough. He'll die eventually. And uh, yeah, we didn't lose any ablator. That's why I only put half. It w uh, it probably wouldn't be good to have zero ablator, but you can have pretty much arbitrarily little ablator on the Mars things. The important thing for the Mars heat shields isn't so much the ablator as the surface area. We just need to have them produce a lot of drag. And that's why, you know, you get things like inflatable ones and uh, because you don't need the blader, you just need drag, so that's the best way to do it. Or, in my case, I've made ones with fold-out pedals, because again, the important thing is just surface area. So, yeah, we'll leave this be. Probably we have to deal with this Jupiter Orbiter 2 mid-course maneuver before we try to rescue Tamara. Uh, okay, we can rescue Tamara first, I think. I don't know if I want to use this Lynx. Uh, to just rescue tomorrow. Maybe we have some more. Oh, we've got a lot more from Order of Earth. Let's just take some of those. And then we can launch that. Now, which ones of you are most lucrative? Franius. Okay, Franius. Uh, Luvis is pretty good. Oh, I can't take any more. Shoot. Um, fine, two. Hopefully they're not in too weird... A set of orbits. Two is better than one. But still, it's a 300,000 fun rocket. So it doesn't quite pay us back. But we're testing it, so. Mars pod's there. Well, the heap is there. Well, at least the periapsis is out of the atmosphere. Okay, um, and the apoapses are both on the same side. That's convenient. Okay. Good. Let's try that. Alright, rolling out. Takes two days. And... Well, we'll have to see which plane to launch into. I'm going to send... And just for comms reasons... Bill. Uh, no, I wanted Bill. i send Bill. Tamara's pod seems to be a tougher one, but also the lower one. Oh gosh. No! No, I didn't notice they were equatorial. Ah! Uh... I don't think we have enough for that. No. Can, uh, can I convince you to launch me from Kuru? Oh gosh. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? We can't launch from here to that orbit. Just uh, recover active vessel. We could use another buzz medium to grab those two. Then we'll 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 not send anybody in it. Maybe fine. We'll not send anybody in and see if we can do it. Let's just go for Franius's heat. Relative inclination twenty eight point six. You don't say. 
Well, at least it really doesn't matter about the launch timing. <laughs> uh, all right, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. Looks like we're on, oh, we've lost an engine. Nope. Uh, can I restart that one? Maybe. Okay, let's try it. If only they could do such things. Well, we may or may not get to see whether stage recovery actually recovers this. Staging. Ah, uh, those fairings didn't need, did not need to go. Please stay attached. <laughs> okay. I guess that would save some Delta V. Be nice if we could, like, correct this at a slower speed. But we're gonna end up trying to correct it at full orbital velocity. Maybe we should just toss ourselves up a little bit higher. Have the aboapsis over here. I'm trying to push that apoapsis down to the descending node there. And we want it fairly high. Yeah, I don't care if I'm in orbit at that point either. Because just doing the correction is going to probably give us the extra energy. Let's see, we've got 2,910. And that's a big no. <laughs> Nope. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 2,910 is not enough to try to get into that orbit. We will need a bit more than that. Not a huge surprise. It's about right there. 3,600. So. We'll just uh, boost this up to a periapsis that will come back down. Maybe we can do some spacecraft tests to make sure that it is safe for crew. I mean, how sure am I that the heat shield's okay and everything else is okay? I think maybe we should test that. If we come back from the moon with three Kerbals, I don't want the heat shield to kill them. Okay, off goes the service module. Now we should probably prep the internal RCS. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, the heat shield should not be overheating. Oh, is it this situation? Uh-oh, we're tilting a lot. Oh, maybe the heat shields are bad. I have to fix them. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, it's still got the heat shield problem from before. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, good thing we didn't have any Kerbals in. Now we're getting flame effects. Great. Well, I think it's sort of survived. We've seen this sort of thing happen before. Okay, so I don't think this will be a problem for anybody else but me. It looks like I already made the fix for the crew vessel pack it's just that I never propagated that fix into my own install <laughs> okay great all right aero caps up Ooh. okay well I mean it, it should be pointed the other way around for the aero cap separation. Obviously, if it's pointed at the ground, the aero cap's gonna like hit the thing. Okay, well, let's see. If despite the heat shield loss, we get it back. This is a little bit weird, but part of the reason why there's high heat tolerance on the parts is because the thrusters are poking out. Okay, well, at least we get something.
uh, let's just do a normal recovery. It's obviously not something we want to repeat. <laughs> I'll take the money. All right. Well, I'm going to have to restart so that I get the heat shield fix. Let me just copy the file from the, the actual release version of the crew vessel pack, which apparently I don't have all the stuff from. And hopefully that'll make things better. But maybe we should test that out 